Hello and welcome to episode 40 of GameSpot After Dark, GameSpot's official video game podcast. I'm your host, Jake Decker, and joining me this week is Lucy James. Hi. Callie Plaguey. Hi. And Tamar Hussein. Hi. We have a special episode planned, a somewhat special. For once, we decided we should maybe wait to record until after the big news drops. So we're recording now on Thursday morning, uh, so we can talk about the Xbox, what is it, 2020? Is that what they were calling it? Yep, Xbox 2020 yeah. showcase? In, inside Xbox 2020, 358 over two days. Directly. <laughs> yeah. They should X- start doing this a lot more. more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so we are going to skip over what we've been playing this week. I don't think any of us have really been playing anything too I finished exciting Final recently. Final Fantasy, that's it. And I feel like we've talked about that oh. game to death. Yeah. But it was yeah. And, and I was going to talk about like Red Dead Redemption 2 again, which I was like, yeah, you know what? Mm. That, it's not, not the place for that. So we're going to go right into this Xbox One X briefing. Uh, Xbox Series X. Sorry. Mm-hmm. We'll get it eventually. <laughs> yeah, it's it's going to happen. Uh, but I mean, I guess we can just start off with like... I don't know, general thoughts on the thing. Like, I don't know, Tamora, did X give it to you? Oh my X, God. <laughs> X absolutely did not give it to me. I mean, like, I I, I liked... Um, the problem we have is we went in there being told it was going to be a meaty look at gameplay. And instead of getting that, um, maybe partly it's our ex- expectations, we got a quick cut through a bunch of games. Now, I don't want to devalue the fact that they were all big new ips and a lot of them look really interesting scorn looks amazing um uh, dirt looks okay bright memory infinite looks fine um <laughs> but like we didn't get any any like really meaty looks at gameplay same for assassins like assassins was the big ticket and it was i mean we saw glimpses of it more than an actual like here's a you know five ten minute look at gameplay um so although Nothing. I came away from it with no indication of what makes the power of the Xbox Series X um, interesting for gameplay, which is a shame. Yeah, well, I mean, all the games they pretty much all the games they talked about, right? Have that. What do they call it? Xbox optimized carryover. For, optimized. No, like for, oh, the, um, uh, why is it? Why am I? Oh God. Out? That yeah, was two hours ago. they I said it like remember. eight times. They said it probably more than eight times. I've, Xbox. I've written this Deliver- like it's one like trillion times. Delivery or something. Oh, smart, smart delivery. delivery. Smart, smart delivery. delivery. That's what it is. All the games, for the most part, have that, which is like cool. But at the same time, it's like okay, so then these games aren't really showing us the true potential of the Series X because all these games are also optimized for Xbox One X. I don't know exactly I mean, how it works. I mean, yeah. but what like, is it? It's like. Surely, I mean, surely you add it and it gets, you buy the game, it gets added to your Xbox account. Maybe they give you a code if you buy it on disc so you can like lock it to your account. And so when you use that account on your Series X, it'll like work. Hmm. The thing that I think they would have needed to really show the power of the Series X would be comparisons in load times. But then that's difficult to do because then you're essentially painting your current console that you are still wanting people to be buying because you're having the cyberpunk version come out this summer, that you're painting that in a slightly negative light. So I honestly don't think we're going to get that kind of comparison until later in the year when they're fully ramping up. This showcase this morning, I think to play devil's advocate in a way, because like obviously what they were promising wasn't great, but I think if you compare it to the original Xbox One launch and like reveal, this is night and day, and it kind of just shows this great evolution of Xbox as a company. And yeah, I think they got the wording <laughs> definitely wrong. As soon as I saw that Assassin's Creed trailer, and there was still the widescreen borders, I was like, mm. I guess if you're paying yeah. Blur Studio, if you're paying Blur Studios millions and millions to make you a CGI trailer, you get the absolute most out of that CGI trailer. But that was maybe I think their big misstep from this presentation. But everything else, like I think the humor. The, hey, here's this massive list of every company that we're working with. That's really good. They're putting games first. I need to know more about Aaron Greenberg's A, camera, and B, fridge. I'm a <laughs> really? huge fan of that fridge. <laughs> the Xbox, the Xbox Twitter account recently has been getting so deep into shit posting that I am yep. <laughs> really a big fan of it. When, when he first said it, he's like, I've got the fastest, most powerful fridge in my kitchen, too. I d- it didn't consider it for a second. I just thought he was joking about the size. And then I looked and I finally mm-hmm. looked and I was like, 
Oh, I see what they did there. They did a little uh, little, little joke. Good work. Good work. <laughs> Highlighting yeah. the show. Yeah, I think, I think like... <laughs> I think what we expected was meaty gameplay, but what they gave us was a bunch of new games, which I think is like super exciting. Um, I think if you like take a step back, like Lucy said, and really think about it, it's considerably better than what they would have done. And and I don't want to pit them against Sony, but we've seen what Sony did with their approach, where it was very technical, and mm. a lot of people were like, "Okay, but what about the games?" Mm-hmm. Um, Microsoft have kind of like. Put, you know curbed that that discussion very early by um showing off games and a lot of them look really cool yeah and and i that was i think one thing one very positive thing i had walking away from this was that there was a lot of new ips too mm-hmm. i think the only, i mean like you've got madden of course and you've got dirt five we'll get into these later and the vampire the vampire the masquerade bloodlines which are sequels uh, but like most of the games they showed off seem like you know pretty big budget new IPs, which is always my favorite part about new generations. And while a lot of the new IPs that come out, these new games aren't the greatest, it's still really cool to see what sticks, what doesn't, to see all these new ideas and like watch people set like the new, I don't know, I guess standard for next gen. It, it that, that was interesting. That was exciting. Kelly, what were your overall thoughts of it? Yeah, I mean, not much different than what we've already said. I. Uh, I mean, it, it's kind of hard to show off like visual fidelity fidelity over stream, I think. So that was also, it's difficult to, because it depends on the, the viewers, like internet quality. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you're talking about like, this is gameplay on Series X, I'm not really getting that full effect. Uh, I was also watching on my phone, so that probably didn't help. <laughs> YouTube, but, YouTube was no, the only I, one that was playing at 4K. Mixer and Twitch weren't doing 4K. Oh, not yeah. even Mixer? I was streaming this morning because I guess I was watching it in bed. So, uh, I, like, Greg was watching it in the living room and streaming, and I don't know. We haven't reset our router in a while. I actually just talked to him about this, but it was like, I was watching it crushed. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Yeah. Any artifacts go, yeah. in there, pal? Yeah, pretty much. It wasn't like, and that's on me. I could have, yeah, got up, but also it was early. I guess to bring up the first game, Bright Memory Infinite, which they showed off. That I looked at that trailer after the fact. I looked at a 4K trailer, and it looked way better than what I saw Tasty. on the stream. Uh, and it looked pretty impressive, and especially considering it's a game made by one person, right? Did I hear that correctly? Yeah, yeah one yeah. person so, in China, they said. Yeah, that, that game's been floating about for a little while, and it's been building some buzz. Um, I think the big news is it's coming to Series X. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's an impressive product. I don't want to call it a product. That's so heartless. It's an impressive game from one person, and really speaks to like how much engine technology has come how far it's come mm-hmm. that one person can take an engine and and you know use assets available and create something like this um, i'm not saying like he's just copying pasting or this person i don't know who it is um is copying and pasting but like it's for one person to do it is incredibly impressive and for it to look that good is even more impressive yeah like the weather effects and like the rain blowing around was super mm-hmm. impressive that, that looks interesting Remind, it gave me titanfall vibes honestly uh, just seeing the wall yeah. running and even the sights yeah. on the gun. I thought it was helpful too. Actually, the way that the, um, what do you call it? Uh, Pathfinder sort of from Apex movement yeah. too. I really dug that. Yeah. Um, I also, I was like interested in Scorn. I thought Scorn, I mean like, you you didn't even see a lot of Scorn, but I was like, ooh, I like creepy stuff. <laughs> mm. So, yeah. Scorn looks amazing. Do yeah, we know I was, much about Scorn? No. So there was something that was floating out from about 2016 that people were sharing on Twitter after the event. I've never heard of it before. Uh, I think it, sh- yeah, it showed up. I can't remember when it showed up. Um, it was like a, maybe a year ago as well. It showed up again. It's like a Metroidvania style game Ooh. with a lot of obviously heavily inspired by H.R. Geiger's work. Um, so because of that, it will look a lot like Alien to people. Um, yeah. And it's designed by a studio called, or developed by a studio called Ebb. Um, 
So it's like some sort of dreamlike world and there's like loads of interconnected regions that you can like explore in, in a free form way, um, like a Metroidvania would um, let you do. And then it's like unlocking skills and weapons as you go along. So the typical Metroidvania format, but within a HR Geiger, Geiger style um, uh, theme, which sounds amazing. If you're I was, I mean, this trailer was like, what, 10 past eight this morning, PT? I was like, Love to see that phallic symbolism. <laughs> wow. <early in> Any <laughs> dripping in there. No, like the two <laughs> figures They're... having sex as well. And the, yeah. I was surprised, honestly. And oh. then you got you got the Yonic symbol symbolism in there too, mm -hmm. which is a word that I enjoy because nobody used, knows that word, even though they know what phallic means. Yonic, maybe. Oh, I know it from it's Yoni. Just the, it's the, it's the opposite. Other one. Yeah. Oh, that Vagina. makes sense. <laughs> It was interesting. I was like, this it is, is a interesting. lot for, this is a lot for 8 a.m., but I am, I'm like here for it. But I think it speaks a lot to, I mean, they've definitely identified that their audience is going to be the older gamers who aren't going to be tuning into this to watch, oh, let's look at Minecraft on the Series X, right? They want to see like mm -hmm. what the hell's coming to the next generation. I find it weird to hear next generation because in my head, it's still 2013. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, given the current situation, time is actually going backwards. So time I'm, is a flat circle. Yeah, I, I'm I'm 2009 <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, I guess to move it back a little bit after Bright Memory Infinite, they showed off the fifth Dirt game, which I think I played Dirt too. It didn't look all that different from previous. Dirt. Like I was I wasn't looking for dirt. I was looking for filth. If you know what I'm saying. Like uh, yeah. look, uh, <laughs> I needed to see the textures. I need to see the car. <laughs> And instead, we just got. I mean, I'm sure it's, it looks it looks fun, but I mean, I'm I'm not your your audience here. Yes. I mean, I think I'm it's interesting not. they've got Troy and Nolan involved. <laughs> yeah. um, that was a, a reveal I wasn't see coming. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm kind of sad that they're just voicing like people. Cars. I kind of what is no, this? they're is voicing this? like uh, like the. I wanted them to voice the cars, like two rival cars that sound exactly the same. <laughs> Cars full. <laughs> it also looked like it sounded like they like shoved a recording device in their in their face while they were recording their lines. Be like, say this for us, please. We're like, have this. We have this Xbox thing we have to do, and they're like, I'm excited to be in Codemasters' new video game. Yeah. And it's like, cool. That's all no we need. And then no one's like, I'm happy to be in Dirt Dirt Five. What? <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was Uncharted. <laughs> Uncharted Kart Racing. Yeah. There we go. Uh, next one we saw was Course Rises 1. Uh, this game looks interesting. I think I was more interested in it in the, until I found out that it seems like a space combat game. And I was like, I don't know if I'm super into flying spaceships around. Maybe I, there's more to it than that. But the story seemed interesting. There were a couple things I wanted to say about this trailer. First of all, I love that she had the eyebrow slit, this e-girl ass. Oh, the e-girl <laughs> eyebrow slit. Her eyebrow slit. But also, I like that this game abides by the uh, Chiverch's rules of spelling. Yes, yes, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I was like, Chorvis, and then it took me a good amount of time to be like, oh, they mean chorus. I get it. <laughs> no, there's a we. Uh, I'm saying it now. Official GameSpot standard is to call it Chorvis. So, <laughs> <laughs> that is now in the style guide. God, that sounds like a name. Of she looks. Like, she looks like a, that's like what days. Elon Elon Musk and Grimes are gonna call yeah. that, that is, girl. I, I saw that. That's and their I was daughter. Like, yeah. I immediately thought of them. I was like, "Yep, that's 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 their daughter on TikTok many years from now." <laughs> um, but like the story seems cool. Like she's some sort of single-handed savior for some maybe all of the mankind or something like that. It sounded like that, but then it cut to <laughs> ships, and then I was like, "Oh, I guess oh. I guess she saved everyone using a ship." Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she she reminded me. The first thing I thought of was Jack from Mass Effect Two, which I have in the notes here. Uh, I saw oh. it, and I was like, "I could kind of see that." I would hmm. be up for that. Yeah. Mm. I like her tattoos; they look cool as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah the design. All right, so I've dedicated a lot of time to talk about this next one. Madden 21? I was going to say Sadden 21, but <laughs> not because I have any sort of, like, ill will towards it, just because my that's how my brain works. It just fires bad puns the moment they come in. Uh, yeah, I feel like well, no one's got anything to add about this game. 
Well, I yeah, so- half this podcast is people from a country where they don't play this sport, and then half this I've- podcast is people who don't like sport. I have tried to play Madden almost every year. Um, really? I can. Yeah, yeah. What? I, 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 yeah, I try. This is I new buy, information. No, no, no. I buy. I buy Madden. I get FIFA. I play Pez. <laughs> like, and at each time, I'm just like, okay, I know how this plays. Because if I'm gonna write about it at any point, or if someone like throws me an interview, I want to be prepared for it. That's even fair. if I don't, if I, even if I don't like, but I always play it, get the un, a functional understanding of how it works, but it never sticks with me. Madden's the one I struggle. Well, Madden and the uh, hockey games. I'm just like, I don't, I don't know the rules well enough for hockey. Um, and like Madden, I'm just like the stop start nature of it. I'm like, I like, I don't mind watching American football over the course of 10 years, which is a match or whatever. But like playing it, I'm just like, I'm just, I, I can't, I can't run these plays. I don't know what these plays I- mean don't understand what it is i know like i've watched the super bowl i've seen the chicago bears good job because there's cubs too god i watched a game with greg a while ago and it was what it was a really high scoring game i think it got to like 40 odd something points in oh like yeah two. yeah it was like a ridiculous game and i was looking at Greg, and i was like is american football always like this and he went no <laughs> absolutely not it was like this i was like oh okay well but it seems like i i saw I, i'm the game based on this is based on twitter rumblings of people i follow who are into sports and into games and they were like yep looks like madden looks looks like a normal man so nothing in there as far as i can tell that's mind-blowing different they um, haven't done a fifa the journey for madden or any of the other ones have they i think, I think they, they did. did yeah they did one they i remember did. trying to play one of those a little while ago and being like good yeah i they want the like story mode for madden that addresses like head trauma head trauma yeah that would be the one. <gasps> oh yeah god what was that documentary from last year yeah um Sis- about systemic Jerry racism within, within the nfl <laughs> no about the guy who killed his um oh oh yeah Hernandez. Aaron Hernandez. Aaron Hernandez. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, that's, and it was no let's about... not have that as a story mode that, yeah <laughs> wait that, that'd be that'd be an interesting story i mode. mean i would 100 percent play that as story <laughs> mode but are there any cheerleading games uh, I don't like a so rhythm is. action cheerleading game i would mm. play that i would play that lollipop chainsaw <laughs> yeah damn <laughs> The only ma- the only football game I've ever played was NFL Street Two, and I like that because it was just like arcadey and ridiculous. But mm. they, I don't think I think they may have made a three once, mm. and I didn't play it. And and then they and then they EA making became them, less interested in making those kind of games. I was like, they didn't right, play well. it, so they stopped making them. Yeah, mm. I guess uh, so. I guess it's my fault. They're just yeah. looking like at their books. Well, Jake is out, so we got candies. <laughs> When I was like, I just want to say, when I was like five, I told my dad that I wished that they would cancel football, like cancel it like a rate, like TV season. And he said, that's not very nice. How would you feel if I said, I wish they canceled Nickelodeon? And that's when I learned empathy. <laughs> I mean, who knew all these years later, you'd be, you'd get what you want. Football I know, is football's yeah. canceled. Wait, I mean, Nickelodeon is still fine. I didn't mean it fine. that way. A fine, and like, Nickelodeon lives on. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that, but yeah. Uh, anyway, the next game on the list, I think one of the ones I'm most excited for here is Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Big uh, Joker I, vibes from this trailer. Ooh. I know. I know! Like, especially coming from, I think what they showed at E3, right? Mm-hmm. It, see, it was very serious and dark, and this one had a very interesting dark sense of humor to it. Well, when I first saw it, I thought it was uh, We Happy Few. Because yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. The smiles. Um, I, well, I thought it was dancing, the darkness, so. like because it starts off with uh, a logo for like darkness. World project, of darkness. And I I was, a world of darkness, the... and I was like, no, not the band. I thought you meant the band. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? Uh, I thought it was a new darkness title because I saw the world of darkness, and it took me a few mm. like a few minutes to be like, oh no, wait, this is Vampire the Masquerade. Um, God, what are they doing with that license, man? Just I, top, was I don't know. We have to figure out where Top Cow is at. Didn't developer buy it recently? The the I thought darkness? I remember reading that. Ooh. Yeah, like the license to make video games. Hmm. If you bring it. it back, it was good. Mm. Um, yeah, but yeah, Vampire the Masquerade, games. I'm so excited for. The original yeah. one. Oh, yeah. It's hard to play these days, but um, oh, I love that original one. That was so good. 
it reminded me a kind of i treated it like as if i was in the tv show angel because it was just like an la like city where mm-hmm. there's loads of vampires and societies and that kind of stuff and you're just rolling around still worth playing um if you have can you make it work. have you seen interviews with the i think either the lead writer or creative director for that game no mm-hmm. he looks like the kind of person that would write or direct a game about vampires in the city <laughs> It's kind of like the like, way Igarashi looks like but a like, vampire hunter. Yeah, but like the like the interview I saw, he was wearing like fingerless gloves and like he was like all, wearing all black. And I was like, all right, this. Oh, but he, he was awesome. very pale. And I was like, they yeah, should, this, this they looks should, like they should make that a thing. Where if you're a developer working on a game and interview, you have to dress in theme with the game. So you're like interviewing a, a Call of Duty developer in like full military regalia. <laughs> Or like, <laughs> hey, don't you have the power to do that at GameSpot tomorrow? Can't you I, just? Yeah. All right, if you guys want us to interview you, yeah, I could. Like, yeah, <laughs> listen, Cyberpunk. If you want us to interview you, you need to be half robot. Namora, you need to wear at least five more belts. I mean, I think he. <laughs> yeah, he already wears. I think, wears, like, I think he could probably just roll in and be like, oh, "There he is, old Noctis, <laughs> back at it again." Uh, the next one, Call of the Sea, uh, which looks interesting. It mm. looks a lot like. A Sea of Thieves style game, but it looks like it's more story focused. Reminds me I, more I was of like a Bioshock, honestly. Yeah. Or Bioshock too. Yeah, yeah I got yeah. like the uh, all of that. What you just said, but also like Outer Wilds. I feel like there's yeah. going to be a lot of games that are like Outer Wilds like now. Um, so I Maybe got that even kind of Firewatch. Vibe. Mm. Firewatch Oof, kind of yeah. vibes, like following this. I don't know. Mysterious. I want to see. Thing. Yeah, I want to see more of it because I felt like the art style didn't match the narration. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a weird thing that, like, only I would care about. But, like, it was like, dearest Henry. And then, like, the art was kind of, like, colorful and cartoony. Yeah. And, I mean, I know there's a lot of fatigue on, like, grim, dark, gritty stuff. But I like grim, dark, gritty stuff. So I was like, where are the clouds? (laughs) But then this one one kind of turned into the shape of water because you saw the... The yeah. uh, amphibious kind of hands at the end, so maybe oh. it'll go there. Okay. No. Oh, see that. That's all I needed. Now mm. I'm more invested. Yeah. Way to go on selling that, Lucy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. you. You did it better than the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Bioshock meets Firewatch meets. The Shape of Water. The amphibious hands. <laughs> amphibious hands. I couldn't think of the webbing. What would you call that? Webbing? Yeah, I yeah. can't think of that word. Webbed hands. Webbed. Web yeah. for your pleasure. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> anyway, The Ascent, a top-down cyberpunk shooter. There's uh, a lot of cyberpunk in this. Listen, yeah. I'm glad yeah. it exists, but there's only any room for one cyberpunk in my heart right now, and we all know which one that one is. But this looks cool. I think this looks cool. I was trying yeah, to think st- of something stylistically to do it looked stylistically it looked really cool but yeah. I think that the top down stuff kind of lost me. I was like, I don't know if I want to yeah, yeah, the like intro like cinematic sequences. I was like, okay, aliens, mm-hmm. cyberpunk and then the top down stuff I was kind of like not as jazzed about. But Yeah, I don't know if anyone played Ruiner, but that was a top down cyberpunk shooter that was really good. Mm-hmm. Uh so looking at that, like obviously like like two different games, different styles and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know. I, I was like, I think I got my fill with Ruiner. Uh, mm-hmm. I'd be more, I don't know. Yeah, just top down didn't do it for me. Uh, no, I rarely play top down games, to be honest. But I mean, yeah. I imagine it'll come to Game Pass. So I'm not saying that I know that or anything, but like, I imagine a lot of these titles will come to Game Pass at some point. Yeah. So like Someone who played then. too much Smash TV back in the day, I love me some top down. So I think that's why I'm like, all right, I'm into this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next up here is the medium, the horror game from Blooper Team, the ones who did Observer, uh, Observer, <laughs> Observer, <laughs> Observer, and and Blair Witch. Uh, did you guys play Observer and or Blair Witch? I played well, Observer played some and of Layers Blair of Witch. Fear, but not. Um, Blair Witch. Okay, I didn't play Observer, but I played Blair Witch, which I re- which I I thought was good. I really liked it. The one with the dog companion, right? Yeah, the one with the dog companion. Uh, they make a name job. for a studio. Bluebird. Who makes horror games? <laughs> yeah, um, they 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 make really cool games though. So I'm interested to see. So we we actually have an interview with developers from Bluber team up on our site it's conducted by Steve Watts um, and uh, they kind of spoke about what they would so this is the game 
that they had the idea for they they say in 2012 but they said they couldn't make it because the tech wasn't there in place until now I, everyone says that it's like yeah. the classic day one how do we yeah. make our game look cool yeah. but um they seem to be very into the the kind of tech to the point where in our interview they mentioned that they have something in their game that they pretty much described as revolutionary to the point where they're patenting it Ooh. um so they wouldn't talk to us about it but they were like oh, we're not there to talk ready to talk about it and they kind of tease it in in the actual um interview they do during the inside xbox so i'm intrigued to see what that is at the very least um baseline they make the like yeah, yeah keep an eye on the oh i'm on it trust me um <laughs> but uh you know, I'm in a pass office. I'm there all day. Um, but like at the very least, they make interesting narratively themed games. They talk about it in in our interview, but they always use horror. Like most horror does. Like that, the mark of good horror is exploring something through the lens of horror, and they do that really well. Whether that's like you know feelings of isolation or like loss or you know a, a normal working day life and how that is explored um, through thriller slash horror themes. So I'm excited to see what they got. Yeah, I think that's why I enjoyed Blair Witch as much as I did was just because it didn't feel like a like a Blair Witch game could have easily just been a derivative campy horror game, but they actually tried to tell a story and do something interesting with it. Uh, so, so I'm excited to see whatever whatever they have planned next. I, I kind of want to go back and play Observer too because I remember hearing a lot of good things about that game. I think that is on Game Pass. Yeah, I think it yeah. is. Yeah, so I, I enjoyed that quite a bit. I'll have to check that out. I was kind out. of excited at the start of the medium because I thought it was going to be a sad mom game, like the counterpart to sad dad games. And I was like, oh, we're we finally getting our sad mom game. Um, What's a sad dad? What's like it? A Last of Us is peak Last sad dad game. Last of Us game. is peak sad dad. Okay, yeah, Last of Us is peak sad dad. But <laughs> um, what, what, <laughs> I just I never. The Witcher is kind of low key sad dad game as Witcher well. Witcher is definitely uh, okay. sad dad game. Um, yeah. uh, Metal Gear Solid is <laughs> kind of sad dad game. <laughs> yeah, I mean Red, uh, Big like, Boss. Red Dead in a way sad dad. Mm. Red game? Dead a little bit of Wolfenstein. Uh, yeah, Bi- Bioshock. So. It's like uh, it's, <laughs> Bioshock. Bioshock Wolfenstein two. goes between like sad dad, angry dad. But, oh, yeah. um, Bioshock Infinite is peak yeah, sad Bioshock, dad. Game. Bioshock yeah. Infinite is one hundred percent like Skybound sad dad. So, in conclusion, there's lots of sad dad games, and we love many of those sad dad games. But I was like, oh man, sad mom games. This is mom's time to shine. But mm. it it because it started with ultrasound, and I was like, whoa. Ooh. And but I I am also into the horror aspect. Yeah, we <laughs> haven't we haven't had, technically that last cooking mama game is a sad mom game, but for very different reasons. <laughs> uh scarlet nexus anime game anime. i didn't i didn't Jake, catch Jake, the trailer this for this you. one Aww. my time to shine and you kelly let's do this uh looks b- b- proper shy i kid i kid it, lo- it looks like it looks like what was that last anime dark souls games that they made Code Vein. Code Vein. It looks like they very quickly pivoted from Code Vein into something else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did get that vibe. I, th- This is another one where the start of the trailer, I was like, okay, okay. Because it had these like flower monsters. And I was yeah. like, okay, that's pretty mm-hmm. cool. And then they hit me with the like, they couldn't be hurt until now. And I was like, all right. And the um, character's voice as well. Like it really stuck out yeah. as being awkward and out of place. It like was a- one that I, I wish they had gone with the Japanese dub just mm. because I feel like it would have been less of a jarring transition from the like drama of the intro to that trailer to like the shonen like young boy voice, like teenage boy voice of the protagonist. And I think maybe because the audience for this isn't Japanese speaking, a Japanese voiceover would have been a little bit easier. But then um, of a Yakuza was in Japanese. So maybe that was yeah, it was maybe that was yeah. just um, Bandai's decision and not Xbox's. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, possibly. I mean, like the thing that uh, I mean, I'll, I'm definitely going to keep an eye on it because it's an anime game. But like, <laughs> like the the telekinesis side of it. Um, whenever games do like physics based telekinesis around combat, I'm always into it. Like ever since Psyops and 
and like more recent stuff as well like control has a bit of a, a lot of it actually um i love that stuff so i'm definitely keeping an eye on it but like it, it very much like to me i was like uh, this looks kind of code veiny to me and code veiny let me down in a big way so yeah well, we mentioned it before, but Yakuza, Yakuza Like a Dragon. Yes. Uh, this trailer sick. was sick. This that trailer was pretty <laughs> cool. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I, everyone's here for AC. This is what I showed up for. Are we, you know what? I assume we're allowed to talk about it, but when we went to Atlas last year to shoot something for Persona, we sat down with the devs and they played a bunch of Like a Dragon. Yeah. And that game is batshit. Like, I love it. The, actually, <laughs> so, no, the, de- the demo came out, so yeah, we could definitely yeah, talk about so it, but it's like... Oh, the, yeah. con- the conceit is, like, Ichiban, uh, the main character, uh, he... It is Ichiban, isn't it? He's, yeah, it's Ichi. Yeah, yeah Ichi, yeah. Um, uh, he is a huge Dragon Quest fan, um, yeah. and he's, like, caught up in Dragon Quest world, like, in his mind. That's why all the combat plays out in turn-based mode, because in his... It's actually real time in real life, but in his mind, he sees it as turn based because he's so into Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest ex- exists in that universe, um, and uh, the the thing that they show, like, there's a, the early quest that we did was pulling that baseball bat out of sword from a stone style kind of thing, um, and then like there's one part where we went into a store and you could buy was it a vibrator? Yeah, I think it was a vibrator. You could buy a vibrator <laughs> from like from like the the uh, Don Quixote and use that as a weapon. <laughs> so like, and like you buy like a dildo and use that as well. Like, it was it I didn't mad. know you could buy vibrators at Don Quixote. <laughs> yes, you no, can. I, uh, yeah, yeah, and like um, they they are really leaning into like the absurd. So I think it's what they're doing so is like wacky. by when they slow it down and make it turn based, they're leaning into like the absurd special moves. There's one part where we saw where he like calls in an orbital strike. From from a satellite using his phone on a, like one random enemy and it's <laughs> ridiculous but um that trailer like it i think the thing that's been for a lot of yakuza fans they've been trying to figure out where it's positioned because obviously curious stories ended but it looks like he will be around because they showed majima in that trailer. yeah majima. so um I'm, I'm currently replaying the yakuza series so i'm very in yakuza mode so i'm, I'm excited for that I've got it sure it's zero good. downloaded. Oh, it's zero is but so when good I when I I'm, I'm gonna finish. So I've done Final Fantasy. I'm gonna finish Royal Persona Five, and then I'm going to Yakuza Zero. This is how <laughs> I'm spending my isolation. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese RPGs. Yakuza Zero has a quest where you have to teach a fake Michael Jackson how to moonwalk, and it's amazing. It's allowed. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's because his name's Miracle Johnson. So yes. Oh, good. Miracle Johnson. I really hope that. Oh my god, we're all too excited about Yasha. I know. <laughs> on, I want to know what the, the conversation was like with Square Enix. And they're like, hey, so we want to have Dragon Quest in this game, but also like not. Like how... That must have been interesting. I can't remember. I, I don't know. I can't remember. I feel like... About that. Uh, we did ask about like them, I've and I've, what I remember was everyone just looking at each other shifty eyed so like, there's nothing i can say about that <laughs> i think they I, I, in all likelihood sorry Kelly, i was just gonna say in all likelihood i think they're working that deal out okay i definitely have seen an anime where dragon quest existed in the anime and it was like super not it was erased which i really like the endings or whatever but the the show the rest of the show's good but um they that it was set in the 80s and they were talking about dragon quest all the time so i'm like i don't know maybe it's enough of a institution that that deal isn't as hard as we think yeah. like yeah. like family mart in japan had like a whole dragon quest promotion and the like the the family mart doors instead of playing their normal jingle played dragon quest music oh. like last year mm-hmm. so i i don't know maybe it's it's an old enough franchise that it's like we're storied we'll it's let you do... enough. there's, yeah. there's a tv series called uh i think it's called the hero yoshihiko and the demon's castle uh, I think it's called like Yusha Yoshihiko, which is it's a parody series of Dragon Quest that is absolutely phenomenal. Like even if you don't care about Dragon Quest and you just know JRPGs, you should watch that because it is mm. hilarious. Like so good. So I think and this so, sl- the first enemies they see is a slime in that in that series. So I think the Square Enix is fairly fast and loose with Dragon Quest licenses. Yeah. Jake, do you think uh, this is going to be your first Yakuza? Well, I've played Zero. I-, I couldn't get into it. I played One, couldn't get into it. I played 
uh, Judgment, which I guess is in Yakuza, and I couldn't get into it. I'm going to try it, but I don't know if it'll be my thing. We'll see. What I've seen, I'm really excited for. And I do love how they announced this by, like, showing it last April 1st as an April Fool's yeah. joke. Mm. And everyone would be like, wait, that'd actually be kind of cool. And they're like, good, because we're making we're it. We're making it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I just want to say, if anyone from RGG Studio is watching... Uh, for whatever reason, please make the Cabaret Club mini game into a mobile game. I would pay real money. I would operate like it's a real gotcha game. I just I, want yeah. that. I hope it's in Like a Dragon. I love the Cabaret Club <laughs> shit so Cabaret much. Cabaret Club is unreal. That's why I'm kind of replaying it because I want to get more Cabaret stuff done. And like even so there's like the RC car racing. It shouldn't be as fun as it is, but like it's it's weirdly obsessive. And like all the other the karaoke as well. Watching Kiryu do karaoke for hours on end. There's nothing else like it in gaming. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Anyway, lastly, they wrapped up with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Some hot gameplay. Oh, wait, we missed um, we missed Extinction. Was it Second Extinction? Oh, we did miss Second Extinction Reclaim Earth. The Uh, one that I thought was Turok, and then it wasn't. Oh, Turok. That's what I meant to put, not Dino Crisis. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> but cool. I mean, I saw a really good tweet where it's like, oh, doing what Far, what far Cry won't or something. I was like, yeah, yeah. this could kind of be I, a Far Cry game. I feel like people have been wanting a new Turok, Turok for a long time. And, and everyone's like, yeah, I just want to like fight dinosaurs in a first person shooter game. And then after seeing that, I was like, maybe I don't actually want that. But I don't know. I'll play it. It looks fun. I just, I don't know. I guess I just didn't quite get why people really wanted a, a new Turok game. It wasn't know. they didn't they I don't port want it to Switch animals. or something and it was like bad? Was that? Imagine that? Didn't they port Turok to Switch or something recently and it was bad? Yeah, yeah there I was think a so. port of Turok yeah. that was rough. I mean, I think that game in, by modern standards is just bad. Like, Yeah, it, it wasn't. I'm going to be real, it wasn't great back in the day either. Damn. Yeah, I, I just... That trailer, like, I was just like, I don't want to hurt these creatures. Like, it just, I don't know. It, it was like, I watching that trailer, I was like, hmm, why am I okay with shooting people but not dinosaurs? I should examine that. That's that's the only takeaway I have from this. <laughs> well, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. <laughs> it was a short It wasn't, wasn't look. any gameplay, was it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it wasn't very much gameplay in the traditional sense, but continues to look cool i fully expected from the way they were talking about it i was expecting to see like a raid or something like a full five ten minute demo at the end in assassin's creed valhalla you play as eivor john marsh that's what we wanted but we didn't get that but Um, ubisoft's got to just be holding on to all that stuff for their stream whenever that happens they're like yeah we're gonna save the good stuff which i understand but at the same time considering they market it as gameplay. It's kind of like, yeah, well, you know, technically, I guess. Uh, you should, yeah, Twitter right now is uh, like not g- happy. Gameplay is just trending by itself. I think a lot of people are pissed. Um, Games are angry. I, yeah, I, 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 at the at the same time, it's like I get being kind of annoyed that they didn't show gameplay, but it's like it's an Assassin's Creed game, right? Like they're gonna show gameplay soon. It's gonna come out before the end of the year. Yeah. Like you'll play it for a month or two and then you'll move on and think about the next Assassin's Creed like it, it, it's fine it's fine gameplay will be there don't worry <laughs> and also like you have to take into account that people were doing all like a lot of that final stuff from home and mm-hmm. you know that's harder to do so it's like I don't know I feel like getting mad is like like chill out <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's, like uh, it, it's 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 funny to dunk on. Like it's clearly just Microsoft and Ubisoft didn't really think about it. They were like, "Oh yeah, this is gameplay," and they didn't realize it would be a bit of a backlash because it's like I don't know a couple nature shots moving slowly. That's just kind of like, eh, okay. But yeah, I mean, I'm still really pumped for that game. Uh, me too. Greg Greg was playing Odyssey again yesterday, and I was like, "Ooh, I can dip my toe back in," um, but. Yeah. Give, give us a 20 minute 
like I, I imagine probably it's just not ready and they just didn't want to put unfinished stuff up on a presentation with as many eyes on it as this but yeah and I, I'm curious to see because normally with the past couple of Assassin's Creed's at E3 we've had like an hour long hands on time with them yeah. uh, so I imagine at some point this summer maybe a little later they'll show like an extended live stream of gameplay in that game or maybe they'll do a um hey play it with google stadia i'm not saying that to be facetious about google stadia but if you remember the first time they were testing that you could just play odyssey yeah that could be an interesting way to deliver hands-on like a to demo people. or something yeah. that'd be pretty cool um but also it would be on google stadia so yeah which i don't think i would buy into stadia to play <laughs> well it's assassin's free. creed demo it's free <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I still yeah. need a control. No, I guess I don't need a controller, no, you right? Can you can use whatever, whatever controller you want. Now. Yeah. But don't you need a Chromecast? If you want to play it on TV. Okay. But if you All wanted right. to play well, it like on your I guess I could make it work, but I probably wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to listener questions. We've got a couple here. Uh, Callie, do you want to take the first one? Sure. Uh, remember that you can email us at afterdarkpodcast at gamespot.com to ask questions, or you can join the Discord. Um, this first one is, I've just scrolled down, is from Isaiah Perez from Pennsylvania. Hey guys, I love the podcast and I've been listening secretly at work since the first episode. I sent in a few questions, but I'm sure you all get a lot of questions, so I'm not too bummed my question didn't get answered. I've been working my, on my backlog between Animal Crossing, Apex, and Modern Warfare, which is fun. Titanfall 2 and wow, what a game. A week later, I beat The Last of Us, and I cannot wait for the new game to grace us in June. But Jake, help me out here. Where can I find out more about the world and lore of The Last of Us? I fell in love with the game, and it took me so damn long to finally play and beat it. I want to learn more about everything I can without spoiling myself for the next game. I muted a whole list of words related to the game, but I do want to find out about the first game and the world that the game built. Anyways, sorry to ramble. You guys are great. Thanks for continually bringing us content through the podcast and the site. I love it all. Keep it up. I'm looking forward to all the content. I don't have a great answer uh, for this, but I just <laughs> wanted to include it because uh, he's written in a couple times and I just wanted to get it in and said some very nice things. Uh, but there isn't a whole lot of lore out there for The Last of Us, at least, that I, at least that I'm aware of. Definitely play Left Behind if you haven't. It should be included if you played it on PS4. Mm -hmm. And there's a comic series too. I think it's like a four-part comic series oh, that yeah. documents before... Uh, I actually haven't read it, but I think it's before uh, Left Behind. I have it or it's right after Left Behind. It's one of the two. Um, well, Evan's working on a video about like the the story so far, but he's mm -hmm. gone super in depth. Like he's read all of the uh, in game letters mm. and um, all the environmental storytelling. He's like, gone but... so in depth that I had to ask him to extend the deadline on QAing it because it was so long. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like 16 pages. Yeah, long. No one's going to be able to read this in one day. <laughs> you gotta, um, you got to move this up. One of my favorite, I mean, the lore of The Last of Us is um, Ish in the sewers. Yeah. I think that storyline is super interesting and super, like it's well, it's self-contained within that. Um, and so, yeah. Evan's piece definitely the comic book like Jake said. I think there's an art book, right? That might There is an art book. Have I don't know if tidbits. It it does. I think there's some like concept art of areas that weren't explored in the game. Like I think there's mm -hmm. I think there's concept art of like San Francisco in there. Ooh. I used to have it. Um I should try to order another one. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the other thing I would say too is it's not really lore, but I would recommend checking out Grounded, which is a uh, documentary about the making of The Last of Us, yeah. which I thought was super fascinating. Like, you're not going to learn a whole lot more about the world that you don't know, but it's still cool just to see their process. And I think they even talk about how they announced that game, which was, I mm. thought, pretty interesting at the time. Um, so, yeah. Just read about, definitely just check those out. Read about Cordyceps. Have a great time. Yeah. Watch that's the, Watch the David too. Attenborough documentary. <laughs> yeah. Don't read the comments on anything. <laughs> Yeah, oh, man. don't read. The I comments. had, I had the, I had it spoiled for me. Yeah. I, I saw something. I'm not gonna say it. Obviously, I saw something, and I don't know if someone just made it up to mess with people. I, I, someone replied to a Demolition Man tweet with just a spoiler, and I was like, I can't believe they would, they would ruin the sanctity of Demolition Man. Exactly. I hate to see it. The internet was a mistake. Yeah. 
Anyway, next question is from Didi on the Discord server. Uh, if you want to send us questions through the Discord server or just hang out, we got a bunch of people there talking about video games, movies, TV shows, comics, all sorts of things. Uh, you can DM any of us and we'll get you in there. But anyway, this one's from Didi. Except and he me. says, Except for Callie. He says, Hi guys, what is a good first trailer? Should it mislead you in order to avoid spoilers? Should it be crystal clear about what it is? Should it have ga- Should gameplay be necessary or CG? Uh, the reason... I included this is because I actually had a really good one because I've been playing Red Dead Redemption 2 Mm. and I think the trailer for the teaser trailer for Red Dead Redemption 2 released in 2016 was really good because it teased a lot of the story of the game. It showed what the game was going to look like and rewatching it after play after having played through the game just gives gives me chills every time. Like Mm -hmm. I still watch that trailer because that line at the end like. You gotta run and you gotta and don't look back is 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 good. Hell yeah! I, I was gonna actually say um, Red Dead One had I don't know if it was the first trailer though, but I think all of the trailers were really good because they started off with like a grand story trailer and then they went into the one hundred ones, which was like in mm-hmm. Red Dead Redemption. Hmm. Um, I think the Mass Effect Three trailer, like Take Back Earth, was pretty good but that was a cgi yeah. one and CGI. so that was like i would obviously prefer to have like in-engine gameplay stuff but i think as far as a, a tone setter that was a good trailer looking back at um old trailers now is kind of wild because some of them just like flat out spoil like big yeah. twists and turns from games oh uh, the we... original original bioshock trailer is another one where it's a really good tone piece yeah. but that's you... one where he gets like like drilled through his hand yeah yeah yeah. Mm. that's really good because it's like you don't get any sense of the actual story of the game but you get introduced to the key characters like you see a big daddy you see a little sister you Mm -hmm. see rapture right and that's really good um but yeah yeah i would say Uh, like to me i think oh sorry um to me i think tone setting is the most important like Personally, like I'm no marketing major, there's plenty of stuff that I'm probably not thinking of. But I really like so like Scorn, for example. I liked that Scorn trailer, gameplay trailer we got today because it gave me a sense of that world and didn't mm-hmm. say a whole like I didn't you didn't didn't need to say anything to get a sense of kind of what was going on or what like the the overall aim of that game is. Uh, and I really like that. I'm the kind of person I remember tone and emotion better than actual plot details um, mm-hmm. a lot of the time. So me too. for me, I like getting a taste of that in a first trailer just to be like, oh, is this something I'm going to be interested in um, thematically? And then when gameplay comes, be like, oh, that's not really my kind of gameplay, but maybe I'll give it a shot anyway. Or, oh, I love this gameplay. Like, I'm all in on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the Batman series has had some amazing trailers. Um, mm. I think uh, the best of the bunch, one I like, it, and it's more like, again, tone and like uh, cinematic quality. But I think S- Arkham City had that song, um, it's like Short Change Hero, which was amazing. And it's just like playing to the sound, uh, to like um, Batman fighting a bunch of enemies. Oh, God, um, that think- was uh, Borderlands 2 as well, that song. Yeah, yeah. But I think Batman did it way better. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, or used it way better. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, of the of all the Batman games, I think Arkham Origins has the best trailer, the CG one, where it's um, young Bruce Wayne um, at his uh, mum and dad's funeral. But you can like he's in between what presumably is Alfred and someone else, um, and it it's like slowly zooming out from him and it's intercutting like various moments through his life so you see him at school getting beaten up and you see him training with the league of shadows if i remember correctly and it's like his career up until he reaches becoming batman but all through the eyes of a boy who's just lost his parents um and it's like super super good as a trailer it looks really really good i think it's one of the tra- the trailer was so good that on an episode of fat man versus batman kevin smith like talked about it and in that episode turned it into an entire tv series like it it has so much potential in that one trailer that he like Mm. fleshed out a full tv series of like young bruce wayne at like a school academy trying to you know deal with the 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 realities of being a kid in school but also secretly 
working his way to training to, to become Batman in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, I remember hearing the pitch and being like, that is incredible. I'd love to see that. But like, just speaks to how much um, was in that trailer and how effective it was. Nice. Lucy, do you want to take the last question here? This is a two-parter, and it's from two people. Uh, I think Jiggs asked the first part, and then Daniel mm-hmm. Moreno added to it. And cool. this was from uh, Discord. What games you haven't played or are not interested in, but your colleagues or even everyone else in general plays, praise slash love it so much, and which games made you drastically change your mind about them for the better after finally giving them a try? I've, I've answered this question before in that like I wish I knew more about Final Fantasy XIV, um, but they're releasing that big patch in July, I think it is, so I can finally dip my toe into it then and not have to deal with all the uh, crap stuff that everyone hates from the base game. What game did I change my mind about? After finally giving it a try. Uh, for me, for that second part, for a game that I changed my mind about was Dishonored. Uh, when I saw the original pitch and trailers for that, I wasn't super into it. Like the mm-hmm. world seemed cool, but I don't know. It just didn't really do it for me. And then a couple months after it came out, I was like, all right, this game got really good reviews. I should give it a try. And I ended up well, I tried to get all the achievements, but the the no kill run achievement didn't pop, so I was uh, oh. pretty annoyed oh, about that. Oh, because it's it's kind of bullshit. It's in the first yeah, one. yeah. Because you can't uh, check. Yeah, you nope. can't check, and if you leave like a body near some water, the tide will come in and drown the body, and you're dead. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed it though. Um, that's a game that I definitely flipped on, and you know, played Dishonored two day one, mm-hmm. uh, played the DLC and stuff, and and really enjoyed that game overall. Oh man, my kingdom for Dishonored 3. Oh, Holy God. shit. <laughs> uh, the game that I drastically changed my mind about was Overwatch because I hated the beta. Oh, really? I played, oh, really? Well, no, no, because right. I played it on PlayStation oh, and okay. I picked Tracer. I remember the first map was Hollywood that I played on and I picked Tracer and I played there and I was like, oh, I'm terrible at this. I immediately hate it. I don't get it. And then played on PC with you guys and I was like, oh, I'm in. I was obsessed with that beta on PC. Oh, my God. I don't know. My one was, uh, surprisingly, Mass Effect. Like, the first Mass Effect, when it came out, I really struggled with it. Um, And, like, it turns out all it took for me to really love it was crippling depression. But uh, (laughs) I, like, got into, like, this phase where I just shot myself away and, like, lived in darkness. Like, literal, like, got blacked out my windows and, and, like, really threw myself into it. And... I think I played it. The first stretch I played for was maybe 19 hours. Bloody hell. And then, and then just like kept playing that game. And once it clicked, it really clicked for me. And like I got obsessed with it. Um, but that first game, it has its like quirks and it has its like weird like design elements. And I think that's what I bounced off um, initially. And then when I came back to it, the uh, kind of vibe and the story and the characterization c- clicked a bit better and I think that's what pulled me in and through it. How about you, Kelly? Um, I would say I want to try Bloodborne. Yeah, you do. I've never played yeah. Bloodborne. <laughs> but yeah, I hear do. Tam talk about it all the time and it sounds like something I really need to play. Um, Matt, Matt so. Paget is currently playing and he absolutely sucks ass at it. But... Um. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then a game that I changed my mind about was Death Stranding. I couldn't give less of a shit about that game, um, but I decided to review it because, and I ended up loving it mm-hmm. and um, thought it was great. So. Cool. Well, I think that's a good spot to end episode 40 of GameSpot After Dark. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll be back next week and we'll talk about what we've been playing and all the new news but thank you so much for tuning in and remember if you want to join our discord shoot any of us a message on uh twitter just don't send us last of us spoilers i'm immune well, i'm yeah, now immune, immune unfortunately dick. oh god anyway uh Callie, where can people find you you can find me on twitter at inky dojiko i-n-k-y-d-o-j-i-k-k-o lucy i'm at lucy james games and tomorrow I am at Tamor H. And you can find me at Jacob Deck, and we'll see y'all next week. And bye. bye.